going on everybody this is vj hunt from the hunt family farm hope everybody's doing well out there today i am feeling much better i am now fully back to full health no it's been a minute no we had a little little break i was sick as i said probably in the previous video but today had a great plan but as you know when it comes to farming nothing I mean, absolutely nothing goes to plan. Um, today was gonna be another fencing video. So I'm out here at the fence and I kinda wanna show you guys, you saw when I built this temporary fence right here for the pasture. As you can see on this side of the line, the grass is low. On this side, we have luscious green grass. And so I wanted to you know, give my sheep, donkeys, more space, uh, rotate them onto another place. And so, we had prepared a, a strip and then we had some people come in. So lock in, stay tuned to how we're gonna work around this. And then I also gotta show you guys like kind of some, I got beef with the with the electrical company, power line people. And I'm gonna show you that, so just stay tuned. So this is really cool. Um, being in the country, I am, I love it. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of the reasons why. As you can see, this is a cedar tree, right? But then if you look really closely, boom, we got muscadine grapes growing in a cedar tree. Um, I'm gonna try them, let's see. Mm, bang, that's good. So, kind of um, an interesting, cool thing is that I guess muscadine grapes are are native. Well, I don't even say native, but they they do grow in in the wild. I know my uncle Otis, who kind of got the farm restored. One of his biggest things, um, he always would like go out into the woods and find trees. So a lot of the apple trees that we have here are actually trees that he went out into the woods and found. Um, some of the some of the trees here in in kind of like our orchards here, they were actually planted, but some of them um, were just actual trees that he found. Um, that These grapes, kind of some of the same situations, you know, you find a grapevine in the woods, he takes it back, he plants it and nourishes it and it grows. And now you have these great, great grapevines um, all around. So we are gonna go today to show you um, a vineyard that my cousin has and then we're gonna explain to you why, um, why, why I'm kind of upset and got beef with the power company and the power line company. Um, but, so I wanna show you guys, I don't know if you can see this. Um, this strip is cut, it's a cut in preparation for building this fence. Um, we got the bush hog on the tractor, we came down, we cut a strip all the way up to the road and the sheep, which live over there on down just on the other side of that hill um we were going to rotate them back over this way right and all the way to that tree line so they had plenty of spaces the problem is is that as we want to do our work the power company power line companies or the power companies or whoever is in charge of these power lines which I don't know if you can see them, decided that they want to do work. And so, in our preparation for building our fence and cutting this strip and getting things going, they decided that they want to insert themselves here. And so we have to now wait um, before we can put the fence up. So I'm gonna kind of just show you what they came in and did and I just happened to discover it as I was, <laughs> getting my tools and stuff together. So let me get up here. All right, so the power line company came out and we saw this ribbon here and we saw it's a power line pole. As you can see, these lines run up and down our farm. And so you don't want to put a fence up that's going to go perpendicular to the power lines because if they drive their trucks in, they're gonna have, you're gonna have to remove the front. The, dang, I can't talk today. We would have to then remove 
the fence that we just put in. As you saw on the video before, we put in a fence post here, um, like a cedar post to sturdy this fence up. And we were gonna run it from this corner post, well, this would be a corner post, all the way down this strip to give our sheep and donkeys all of this land out here to graze and, you know, kind of do their thing. But the power line company came in to put that stake in and they have been working on some trees and stuff on the other end. So I think that they may be replacing power poles, which means that they will have trucks and stuff all through here, which really, really does suck for us because we don't want our animals out here with them, number one, and then number two, any work that we do, they're gonna pull it up and destroy it because they have priority. So, that kind of killed my plan for today. But what we are gonna do, we're gonna get an opportunity to see some of the other damage that they've done. Um, like I said, I'm not super mad with them, but I get it, right? We gotta have electricity, we gotta have power. And so we're gonna go down, check on the sheep, feed them, get an opportunity to see them, check on everything. Um, but yeah, they kind of just screwed up uh, our plans for today. Pecan trees, pecans are growing. We have an abundance of pecans just around here, pecan trees. They provide great shade. Uh, the squirrels typically eat them up before we're able to get them. So it kind of sucks, but you know, it's part of it. Hey, Millie. Oh, God, come on, girl. Come on, Jack. It's like a wild, wild animal. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. I'm getting, I'm getting, getting attacked. The grain is like drugs. Ah. We had a squash that actually grew. They didn't eat it though. Hey, she's about to kick some. Got yeah, two squash to grow. It's interesting. So this is what's left of the plant. I think they ate the plants. Well, this was the guy that was sick. He's starting to look a little bit better. Um, I think I'm gonna hit him with some more medicine today. Um, but you notice him, he's getting them.
Oh, he. Oh, man. I'm about to give him some more medicine. He, he's looking a lot better, but I think I need to warm him one more time just to make sure that he's free of the worms. Um, so I'm gonna try to do that again today. So we're out here now at the garden, but what's going to be the garden? As you see, we bedded up about five rows. My dad planted, I think this is collars, but as you can see, they're not doing the best. Um, we had a really good rain the other day, and so uh, it gotta be, it's tricky during this time of the year, and. North Carolina because it's still technically summertime. It's hot. Um, and so, you know, it's starting to, it's beginning to cool off, but it's not cool. Uh, and, you know, the rain kind of comes and goes, like you don't really know. Um, so when planting in the fall, you have to be very careful because, well, it's not August, I'm sorry. It's early September, it's still warm here. And so we, it can be a situation where if you decide to plant, it could backfire on you. Um, in this situation, I, don't, I think those plants will be okay. Uh, we'll, it's a small enough row where we can irrigate it to keep them going. But um, when you're doing big fields, it's very, very important that you can kind of gauge the weather. The weather dictates how successful your crop is. Now, as I stated earlier, I got some serious, I mean like, beef beef with power line companies. So, in a power line company's effort to keep things from growing on their lines, they tend to spray. And I know people kind of made a comment, oh, you're spraying harmful pesticides, I mean, herbicides that are harming the environment, that are harming animals. And you know, I got that in the comments in which me spraying the fence lines, um, yes, those chemicals can harm if they are not used the proper way. So the person that made, the, the people that made the comment, you're absolutely right. We don't like to use very many herbicides or pesticides on the farm because we want to keep it as natural as possible. But when it does affect our fence lines, we do spray a little small amount. Now, we spray responsibly, not you know, mass spraying things. So in the power lines event and trying to keep things growing, they did this to my cousin's vineyard. Um, I want to kind of get a, a get, let you guys get a closer look. It's an electrical fence to keep deer out. But as you can see, we had grapes growing um, and they were looking well, but then the power line company came in and sprayed and literally destroyed the entire uh, great crop. Um, they, this, I think this, this has been something that my cousin Judy that lives in New York, her and her father have been working on for years. So, you know, these grapes would have been amazing grapes. Um, this vine was doing really well, but as you can see, it has died. Um, all due to the spraying of pesticides. So this, the goal was for the grapes to run along this line. I spent a lot of time trying to set this up, all for it to be pretty much destroyed. I mean, every plant has died essentially every plant i don't know what to do man it's a it's a tough thing um i do get i do understand what the power companies are doing 
But at the same time, man, Jesus Christ, destroyed our whole grape crop, well, her whole grape crop, uh, in the midst of trying to prevent stuff from growing. I don't think it was necessary. They probably spray on a windy day, um, which is never a good thing. It did not hit its intended target. Um, I do want to come down because this is very close to our beehives. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, they are super active. There's bees flying out left and right. Like they are, they're going out to get it. And that's always a great sign um, that, you, that you have a lot of activity out here by the bees. As everyone knows I'm shook, I'm scared, I'm terrified of bees. So this is probably as close as you're gonna see me get to them. As close as you're gonna see me get to them because I don't have a suit on them one. Um, and I'm terrified. My sister, uh, she got some bee videos coming. She got some videos coming. She tried to shoot and it like rains. It's like, it's just a, it's tough um, to try to shoot when it rains. It's not good for the bees. Um, you don't want it to be too hot. Um, and this is like their busiest time of the year. I don't know if you can see the bees flying out here, but they're flying crazy. This is their busiest time of the year because they're. this is like that last push of like things blooming so they can stock up on the wind, stock up on honey for the winter. So they're super active. Um, it's not extremely hot, so they can be active, um, but it's, it is getting late in the season. Um, I'm going to try to fly the drone into the hive to see what happens. Um, so stay tuned, that should be pretty interesting. And just like that, we've come to the conclusion of our video today. Number one, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, comment. Um, appreciate you guys. We've, we're up to, you know, over a thousand followers or subscribers, I'm sorry. Um, we thank you, we thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep watching, keep paying attention. We're gonna keep bringing content for you. Uh, we appreciate you, we love the fact that, we love the engagement, love that you're, you're asking questions, you're adding suggestions. Anything that you wanna see, let us know. We're gonna continue to work to provide, you know, good quality videos for you. We wanna thank you guys for being locked in, tuned into the Hunt Family Farm. You guys have become family to us and we appreciate you. So, until next time.